Welcome back to part three of our tutorial series on how to make a custom holiday light show prop. In today's episode, we're going to go over custom props, how you make them, how you set up your wiring, and then why. And the reason we have to do wiring in the prop in here before we actually go push our pixels is we need to know the orders of everything and how those all connect. So before I get to the exact details of that, I want to talk a little broadly about models and X lights in general. So the prop that we designed, this one right here, is of a specific category in X lights. That's called a spinner. Those have pixels that radiate out from a center point to the end. Ours has like a cool curve to it, but overall it's a relatively standard one in X lights. And in fact, it is actually one of the ones right here across the top. You make a new one by just clicking the spinner button here and then dragging out in the interface in your spinner. And you could say that you have 10 arms on your spinner and that each arm has 50 lights if you wanted, or maybe each one only has four lights. So it's a very simple type of prop to actually make a basic model for. And you actually could, if you're okay with splicing wires, make the prop like this in X lights and actually use it for the one that we designed. However, it's a little bit of a stretch of the pixels. You end up with a lot more soldering and it's just not the way you generally want to do stuff because it's easier to fix this in software once than it is to have to cut and splice and solder every time you make one of these props physically. So we're just gonna delete this guy right here because we're not gonna use that one. But what I do have is the default one set up right here and a little matrix set up, as well as a custom prop that I made from a, a different setup because this is my custom prop project. One thing I do recommend doing is in X lights, you can actually determine where your show directory is. And I have a completely separate show directory just for R&D. So just for new props I'm making, things like that. I like to do all of that in a separate directory, separate show directory from my actual main show. So nothing I'm doing is gonna mess up the fact that my show is actually going on outside. So I do recommend that. And then we're gonna export the files later so that you can then import them into whatever project you would like. I'm gonna jump back over to the sequencer here. I'm gonna click on this bars effect. So bars, very standard, just simply makes a set of colored bars that move across your prop. The number of pixels down here in this matrix is the same number of pixels in the prop up here. Now internally to X lights, everything kind of works a bit with these, uh, like a spreadsheet in this thing called the render buffer. And you can actually see the render buffer settings up here on the right in your layer settings. In this case, what I'm telling this particular prop to do right now with these bars is to go in the direction up. As you can see the red, green, and blue bars, which is red, green, and blue because it's the order they are here in color is going up across that sort of matrix-like spreadsheet. Well, when you apply that same exact color transformation buffer to what's called the default render style on the spinner, it's using the internal buffer that says this same spreadsheet of what pixels on these points map to what space on that grid. So for example, when we look at the layout tab, you see the green dot or the blue dot that's number one. So in this case, that's number one on both of them. And in the case of the spinner, uh, this is number six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it continues. So you have this zigzag in your wiring. What that also means is that when we do our custom prop, we want to try to set it up roughly the same way with our custom numbering so that on the default buffer, you get the effects that work the same way as the default props. The reason we're gonna do that is lots of people purchase sequences. And those purchase sequences will often have effects designed for spinners. Well, if those people want to put those effects, the, the ones that they've bought, onto the custom prop, they want it to behave as much as possible like the normal prop would. If we just did kind of ad hoc wiring and just didn't really pay any attention to what our buffer was set up as, when they would go put, say, a bars effect on it, you wouldn't get that radial pattern like this. You know, when you went and changed the bars to be moving left, they wouldn't light up like this. So they would still be able to use the per preview style, 
which gives you, you know, a graphical that, that's actually looking at the, this, this as a rectangle, like it's being overlaid like this. Um, but the other ones really wouldn't work terribly well. You'd get some kind of odd things that look a bit like this. You know, it just isn't what you would think things should be. You know, a lot of times when you've got stuff well, like a radio, you want to be able to do that or that, right? Like these are some of the cool effects that you can pull off with a spinner that's set up and configured correctly. Okay, great. So how do we design it so that our wiring can match this? I'm going to show you. But the first part of this actually happens outside of X-Lights. The very, very first part of this actually happens back in Fusion. So the first thing we're going to need is if you click the top view here, we're going to need a picture of this, and then we're going to need to flip it around. So the fastest way to actually flip it to set up for wiring view, if you click these little triangles in Fusion, we're now looking at the back of our prop. And I'm going to use the screenshot tool here on the Mac to sc screenshot and save that file out. All right, now we've got that file. We're going to go load that into a web page, and not just any web page, but David Pease's lightshowhub.com, his custom model builder. So the custom model builder is a fantastic tool David made for the community, and it's been really, really useful. It allows you to very easily lay out and make sure that your pixels are actually going to fit properly and not have uh, too much overlap, but lets you design the x lights model in a far more interactive way. So first thing we do is we're gonna choose our file, and I'll jump and load that in. All right, and now we've loaded this in. By default, it sets your canvas width and height to the number of pixels in your actual image. Um, you don't necessarily need to have a canvas anywhere nearly that detailed for a lot of the things that we're going to deal with. So I'm going to set mine to 500, 500 here. Um, and zoom in with the mouse wheel. And our image is square enough for the sake of what we're doing here. Now, he does give you the ability to flip horizontal. Now, we don't need to do that because we took a screenshot of the back of our prop because we knew we'd be doing this work this way. But the important part is we're going to give our prop a name, Herman Spinner here. And now we're going to go over and start working on our nodes. So we're going to go to the Nodes tab. And we're going to click the little Add Nodes button. And I'm going to show you what not to do first. So by default, we're in auto numbering mode. And if I were to just click each of these spots, it's making pixels at each of those. Hey, there we go. Well, now we have a problem. Because now I want to go down to here and make that be my six. Well, we don't actually fit the wiring. And in general, in this one, yes, technically you can actually stretch the wire just enough to make that. But I do not recommend it. I don't recommend trying to push your pixels to that, that far of a distance. So what you can do in here, which is convenient, is you can remove nodes, you can select nodes, and you can renumber nodes. So if I have this node selected, and I hit delete, it will go away. So that's cool. You can also turn off auto numbering and change the number on a node. So let's say that you messed up and you wanted to fix the numbering. You can also decide for the auto numbering system up here what the next one's going to be as well as, if necessary, refine the grid size. In this case, we want our grid size to be probably about there. So the grid size is actually what's going to get used by X lights um, when actually making the uh, final placement of these for. So that should, that should be fine. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's turn that right back off. In order to edit the numbers on here, you've got to switch over to the Add Numbers to Nodes button. And if you right click on a node, it will erase its number. And we can then change what our next number we click is going to be and say what number it is. In this case, we want our next number to be four. So when I click here, that becomes four, and then it auto increments to five. Now this isn't actually how we're gonna wire it. I'll show you how we're gonna wire it. Let's clear all these out. And let's say our next number is gonna be one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one, skip a pixel, two, skip a pixel, three, then back here to four, then back here to five. Now we'll go back to add node button. 
and then we're going to go, uh, let's see, let's actually look and see if we should go left or right. So if we look back here, one, two, three, four, five, five is our, our black, but our number two is green, so number two is to the right. At least uh, in our finished model, number two, the second row is on our right, which means we should go the other direction. So because we're looking at this from the back, if you were to flip it over, that's on the left, which means we're going to go left. And in fact, actually, we start on, should actually probably start on the bottom. So let's just go and go to numbering mode, and we'll just actually turn off all of those. And what we'll do now is we're actually going to go start again with auto numbering all the way back at 1. And we're going to make this one be our 1. Go move that node here to the actual place where I want 2. There we go. Then 3. Then 4. Then 5. And then our next one's going to go this way so that it maps correctly. So then we'll jump from 5 to making that 6. Then that's 7. And then that's 8 right here. And then we double back again. And then we jump to the next center hole. And then go here. So this will allow us to have our wiring be very clean, be very tidy, um, and not have to do any extra splices that we just don't need to do. We'll go back into numbering mode since we are already here, and then we know we're going to jump from 15 over here to 16, then 17, then 18, 19, and then back to 20. And then we go back to making new nodes, and then from 20 we're going to jump across to 21, to now, technically, you could have just ended on this one back here, but what you always want to do when possible is have the identical pattern going all the way around. The reason that we do that is it just makes our lives a lot easier when you're actually wiring, that it's consistent, that it's much easier to not make mistakes, which is, you know, always my preference and should be yours too. Okay, so now we have our numbers, but if we were to just export this straight up and go into X lights right now, things would actually go in the wrong order. We would have lights that are constantly jumping. I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. But let me at least show you how the submodel system works in here to show you what we're going to do, which is we're going to take these. So I'm going to make a submodel. We're going to call it default because that's what it's eventually going to be. And we're going to add five lines. Three, four, five. So there's our five lines. Remember our five lines from right here from, from the matrix. And now what we're going to do is our top is where things actually start. So it's a little bit backwards, I'm pretty sure. We'll see if I do this right. I think I'm going to. And if it's not, we'll flip it around. But the first pixel in the matrix is generally considered to be up here or in, the, uh, in the array. And then it goes left to right, up top to bottom. And by default, it actually doesn't want to put them in there. You see, it actually renumbers them. And that's the problem with doing it in here, is that I've selected these, but it's actually not even the order I want them to be in. But because they're next to each other, it won't let you do it. Now, what you can do is you could then go here, 5, but you see, you have to click on 2 for anything to happen. So this is why this gets a little... Maybe there's a different way someone's better at using Lightshow Hub than I am. Um, but this is kind of the issue, is that I can now go here and say 5, and then I can say 2, and then I can say 4, and then I can say 3. And then you put a comma, and we say do 6, 11, 16, 21. And then this is the next one around, so that's 5, comma, f comma 10, comma 11, Nope, not 11, sorry. Uh, 15, 20, 25. For more complicated props, I actually end up using spreadsheets and expressions to actually make all of these and make and simplify this because technically these all have the same offset. If you look, these are actually all just um, 
four numbers higher on each one of them. So you can just put that into a spreadsheet and just tell it to figure out the math that way. We've only got two more left to do here, so it's really not necessarily worth the time this time. But it is something that I have done before, and it is a pretty effective way to, to solve this particular issue. 12, 17, 22. Yep, that's all those. Five numbers. Uh, the next one goes 4, 9, 14, 19, 24. And last but not least, we have 3, 8, 13, 18, 23. Okay, so now we have our array. We've called it default. So we're now going to go to File, and we're going to export the X model, and then we're going to go uh, bring that in. I do highly recommend that you do, uh, do the print diagram. which gives you this convenient image that you can use and print this out. We'll actually print this out shortly uh, to actually use when we are physically wiring our pixels. So highly recommend you print this out and save the image. I'm going to do that. And when we go to our actual pixel pushing video, you'll see I will have this one in hand. We're going to go and export our X model. Now we've got our file, and we're going to come over here, and now you get to use this import button. So we're going to do an import of a custom model. We're going to put it right there next to our previous one. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and hey, look at that. Now we have our custom model that is shaped correctly and lined up with one pointing down. Now you see it says our start point is right there, so it is kind of backwards from the way it is on here. So we may have actually done that backwards, but conveniently I'll show you how to fix it. But wait, did we really do it backwards? I mean, yeah, that's our first pixel, but that's not necessarily our first pixel in our, our default model. That seems weird. Uh, first thing you want to do is save because we've brought this in. We're going to go look at our model data. And this actually shows us the where those pixels actually line up, and that there is indeed our number one. And if we click on our submodels, though, we have a submodel of a default that actually has our correct ordering with our bottom row saying, ah, there is the reversion. The reversion. So the number in here. If you notice in his, is actually opposite. So it calls it top here and bottom here, but it's actually top versus bottom here. But conveniently, there's a reverse nodes and reverse rows button. So we can flip those around and check it out. Okay. The default style of the sequence. So if we go to sequencing now, we're actually going to go up here and we're going to go add our Herman spinner to our project. We're going to go um, move that up right underneath our original spinner. And let's see what things look like first. And we'll go row copy effects, row paste effects. So now we have a, a, everything on the row. And you'll notice that it's actually using the render style as a set to per default, which says per preview. And our bars going up, actually let's just do a quick render for a moment there, so we can see everything next to each other. Uh, one other thing that's helpful, I'm doing this here in the tutorial uh, time, and I changed it backwards in the show, but I'm setting my pixel size to nice and big. Um, changing that pixel size just lets you see what's going on visually a lot easier. So now with our Herman spinner, we've got it, but hey, it looks like the matrix. It doesn't look like a spinner. And that's kind of the problem. The reason is, is because by default, custom models are treated more like a matrix than they are anything like this. And that's where our submodels come in. 
Now, maybe there's a way to make the submodel be the default model. I haven't found a way to be able to, to set that. Um, the preview style here can, doesn't have that as an option. There's no, I've not found that feature in x -Lights. If anybody knows how to do that, let me know. It'd be helpful. Um, but what we can do is go and look, and there's our submodel called default. And what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to go back into our sequence, and instead of using the regular Hermann spinner, I'm going to go and actually use the default, or use and put the effect on default. I'm going to go row, cut the effects off. I'm going to go here to default, and we're going to go row, paste effects. And now, when we render, I'm going to go to, there we go. We change our render style to default. Check it out now. Now what you notice is, is hey, but these are reversed the way I kind of wanted them to be. Okay, well, if we check here as well, Orientation's kind of going, the orientation vertically, let's take a look, let's just stop and uh, put our frame there, is yellow, blue, well, those are backwards too, because it goes yellow, blue, green here, and this is going yellow, blue, green. Well, how do we fix that? Well, we could go and retype all the numbers, but we're not going to go do that. We're going to go back to submodels, and we can just fix that here in x lights pretty easily. And we're going to go reverse rows and reverse nodes. So we're basically flipping both of them. We're going to hit save. We're going to come back here and take a look. And now, look at that. So when we are now looking at our default one here, which is now cycling nicely from red followed by green followed by blue. We have red followed by green followed by blue, all moving in towards the center. And we could even just switch those back out to just black on that one. And we'll do that for the same from our traditional spinner. So you get the same effect, but now it's actually cool and curving on our custom model. Let's throw some green back in there. Looks pretty. But this is only working because we're running this on the Herman Spinner default model. Same here. Now we're able to get our cool grid effect. So even though we wired this in a completely different way, through the use of custom models, we've set this up so that our effects all transition and run exactly how we expect them to. Something we should address here is the fact that when you do put an effect on the base model, it does show up and move like a matrix. The exact reasoning for that is this. If you were to click on the internal model of a spinner and look at the node layout, you get this grid of just the pixels we're using, or just the nodes that exist, but the actual shape is set up mathematically as a spinner. If we click on a custom model and look at the same node layout, well, the actual position of those nodes is defined by this grid, but that's actually also what defines how the effect buffer is running. So you can see this layout here. Remember we saw the, the bars going up? They were actually going up all of this layout. Now, we fix that by having a more custom submodel right here called default that is the same layout, effectively the same flow, as this model is right here, as the internal spinner. The kind of downside with doing it this way is that by default, when you add a model into your view for sequencing and you click on it, you're going to get that. And you have to double click on it to get to the submodel. And there's our submodel that now actually works the way we want it to do. And if I cut that effect from here and paste it to there, hey, look, now it does you know, the radial the same way we would expect our spinner to do it. OK, well. There are ways to make this your life a little bit easier if this is what you're dealing with. The first is that 
groups can actually have submodels added directly. So the first option is we're going to go over here into our layout, going to right click and add an empty group, and we're going to call this my spinner one. And we're just going to select Herman spinner default and add just that. So this is a group of one that just has this one piece in it. We're going to hit save and go over to our sequencer. We're going to go and add the my spinner one group right here. And now if we were to take and look over this same effect, and we're going to go put it, we open this up, we're going to actually go to where it says default and go over here to the end to my spinner one where there's nothing animating. So everything should be black. And we're going to click and see that, hey, almost worked, but not quite. And what you got to do is you've got to go to per model per default. So by default now, this group is now going to work in sequence kind of the way you want it. Unfortunately, there is not a default way to set this up. So you just do have to go per model per default. Well, the other thing you can do, though, is you can actually add all of yours spinners to per model per default as well. And this is something that you can bulk edit. The other option you have with a group is you can actually add multiple spinners to a group and have them work the same way. So if we do an empty group and we say just call the group spinners, and we take our group of spinners, and we add our default along with our default spinner down here and hit save. And we come in, and we're going to add that back in as well here. Now we have spinners, and we're going to take this off of that, paste it on here. And again, our render style is per model per default. And now all of our spinners get the same effect as if they're the only ones that matter in the system. We can do highlights, we can do 3D, we can do gradient. And we can do, a, there we go, something cool like that. And if we were to switch that from up to left, works the same way. So that's how you get a custom model that animates like a stock model, but has a custom layout that can also deal with things like change this to per preview. And to default. So this way, your group, when it has multiple things in it, you can still move things across it in 3D or in 2D as well, and have a nice looking effect but you're able to maintain the per model, per uh, default effect of having it be a traditional spinner. All right, so that's the very basics of how I set up an XLite's custom model. The only thing left to do is to actually export it. And what's cool is you can actually include this group with it already set up as a single group that just has the one in it. So if you were to and you can also include if you want the spinners group as well. So if we just rename this group, if we just rename the model Herman Spinner Group, and we have our all our spinners groups, when you do click on the uh, model to do a custom export, we're going to export next lights model, and you want to go name your model something and hit save. You can tell it which groups that you would like to export with it so that when you come bring it in, these groups will already be added and they will already have the models. So I definitely recommend exporting a group already that has the uh, correct default submodels attached. All right. Hopefully that helps you learn a little bit about the, the ins and outs and the whys of custom props and how to make them behave a specific way so that your sequencing is easier later. Join us for our next episode shortly. You'll see a link to it right here in the corner. Remember to click like and subscribe. It really does help. I really do appreciate it. And if this video is helpful, please leave me a comment telling me so. If it wasn't helpful, you can tell me that too. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic day.